Hello, welcome to how you possibly should buy a Marshall EL3400. Um, so yeah, the first thing you need to do is unscrew the bottom obviously and then there's a big insulated plastic wobble board you've got here. And uh, hammers are always useful for fixing anything and beer. Um, so yeah, we're going to attempt to do this. It's kind of my own method, but it should work. We'll find out if it works. You need a multimeter and a pair of probes. Ideally, you could do with some crocodile clips on these, but I haven't got any. But yeah, it's um, it's an old amp. I don't use it very much. I've got ran for over a year or so without actually being biased. So I figured let's work it out. So the first thing is obviously with the lid off, don't plug it in with this bit live, or you'll um. You'll give yourself a bit of a tickle if you touch anything. So, the the equations we're going to use today is Ohm's law, V equals IR, and the other power law where P equals IV. So each tube um, is 25 watt plate dissipation, maximum plate dissipation. And um, so... Supposedly, according to helpful people like Olaf and Steve on the uh, uh, Rig Talk forum, uh, you want to set it so that when it's idling, it's a 70% of of that. So you can get a bias right and and measure the current, but I'm too mean and I'm too impatient. I want to bias it now, basically. So, but there's there's a cunning way I've worked out that shouldn't need it effectively but tell me if i'm wrong i assume i'm probably going to post this on youtube so you can tell me i twat in the comments so we've got 25 watts uh 70 percent of that not 0.7 percent that's 0.7 or 70 percent gives me 17.5 watts plate dissipation i'm going for i've measured you can measure the the voltage the plate voltage across uh eight here that's that's a that's the ground basically, that's the cathode of it. And pin three, which is here, you can see it's actually numbered helpfully on the pin socket. That is the anode voltage. So I've measured across there, and I know that's 466 volts. So I've got, I want 17 and a half watts. I've got 466 volts. We're gonna use good old P equals IV. So I equals V over Sorry, I I equals P over V. Sorry, I had a bit to drink. Um, which equals 37.5 milliamps. So that's for 70% plate dissipation. Where I've been informed that you can go for kind of between 55 to 60, which should make them last longer, especially if you've got shit tubes, which might blow up. Um, so the, if we can work out, if you actually put the different numbers through the equation, you'll work out that's a minimum of basically 30 milliamps if you've got 55%. So there, there should be a reasonable tolerance. And I'm going to go for about 37.5 milliamps plate dissipation, but I'm going to tweak it down a little bit. So let's see what happens. Right, so if you've got a bias, right, or some of the one of these things, which I don't have, you can measure the current into the anode um, Flowing, flowing through the the plate dissipation basically per tube because you plug it in and then so we would want our calculated 37 and a half milliamps or just below that per tube. Well, if you have a look at the circuit diagram, there's no useful way to measure that per tube without one of those magic magic plug-in devices. But the the, this uh, this here's the output transformer. You've got another one because this is a dual monoblock, so it's uh, it's effectively two totally separate amps down each half. So if we look at, I may as well show you the half that I'm going to actually be measuring rather than this half over here. Um, so this here, where's it gone? What am I looking at? Ah, there it is. Um, if we got uh, this bit here, this white thing here is the center tap of the output and then half the tubes one one pair drives this half off the anode 
and the other half drives this pair off the anode. So unless I'm going daft, um, the current between the center tap and the black is the idling current for one pair of tubes because whereas class AB amp is push pull so half of it pulls the waveform one way effectively and the other half pulls the waveform the other way so yeah cover that's what it's called push pull um, and so when it's sat idling the current should flow from the white you should get two tubes worth of idling current flowing from white to black and two tubes worth of idling current flowing from white to red so this is the only place I found in this amp other than getting a bias right and spending some money which I'm too bloody mean for um, that you can measure the current flowing into the anode so um, that means well this 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 transformer has an has a certain resistance to it um which if you're dealing with ac when it's running and you got all your wheelie waves of voltage flowing through it then that will be impedance which will change and it's all dynamic cleverness to do with capacitors and all the rest of it but we don't have any input signal to it when we're kind of biasing it we're just looking at dc current so to dc this is effectively just a resistor now we can measure across, if we measure between here and, I can't do it with one hand, if we measure between, I'll just tell you, between white and red, we get a lovely, what did we get, 16.3 uh, ohms. And if we measure between white and black, we get 15.7 ohms. Now those are roughly that 16 that's 16 ohms within a tolerance of less than 2%. So if we measure, if you think about Ohm's law, which is the good old at the top V equals IR, the voltage across that will equal the current across it times the resistance it is. So if we want to know the current across it, I, then I equals V over R. So if we know what R is and we measure V, v then we know what the current is, hooray! Or, we, or if we know what current we want and we know what R it is, then we can calculate what voltage drop we should see across it. So, um, we want, uh, we, we've measured it to say that it's 16.3 ohms across it. Um, and we then want, uh, oh, box. I'll have to go and get a calculator. Um, we, we want 37 and a half milliamps per tube. Now, if you remember that per tube, as I stated, there's the current flowing across each half of that is the anode current or the plate current, whichever you want to call it, for a pair of tubes. So if we go and have a lovely look at a calculator, we know that uh, I should have calculated this already, it might have been easy. So, uh, what we're doing? Um, v that we want across it equals IR. IR. I'm trying to film and so at the same time. So, we want 30. Oh, don't forget, it's two. It's the idling current of two tubes comes off each half of that. So, we've got to double this. So that will give us 60, my maths is terrible, 74, 75, 75, 75, yeah, 75, 35, yeah, 75. So that's 75 milliamps times the resistance. We'll, we'll, we call it with this tolerance on here is within a couple of percent. So we'll call that 16 ohms. So times 16 ohms. That will then give us 75 milliamps times 16 ohms. 75 times 16. That gives us uh, 1200 millivolts, because that's milliamps. So that is 1.2 volts, basically. So if we see 1.2 volts across each half of the, um, each half of that trans transformer, then we'll be pretty close. 
you if you actually calculate it based off the um off the what did i do uh, earlier on i was poking around with a um with your with i think i said i calculated that if you wanted only 50, 55 to 60 percent then you'd end up if you were if you kind of went halfway between there you'd actually end up with about 1.07 volts so we can now go back over to the amp and let's uh, have a sip of beer until we can have some high voltage if you go to pill kill yourself you may as well do it when you're pissed all right so so obviously if you're going to measure the impedance of this which i've done already do it with it unplugged do it with it off don't kill yourself um i already measured the voltage across here obviously with it on and with the amp off standby so now we're going to plug it in and fire it up so i'll have to leave that to warm up for a bit um i don't know if i've got no input to it and it's all effectively running at dc then theoretically I shouldn't need a cab connected, in theory, but I'm not sure how good my theory is. So I've got my old Marshall cab out. So this is now all marvellously live. So this is the fun part. This is this is going to be a YouTube video of a drunk man killing himself whilst trying to video him using two probes on a live thing and adjusting a voltage. Uh, ah, the other thing is the the bias pots for this you've got two pots there's a bias pot and a balance pot which affects the, the the phase inverter and how much is how much is push and how much is pull to be honest um, if you want to think about it that way well I don't know or I guess you can set the balance by poking around with a silly scope and a load and all the rest of it um, but I'm not going to worry about that too much today assuming my um, my phase inverters with their balanced I should get the same out well I guess they're circuit tolerance but yeah I'm not going to poke around with my balance so all I'm interested in is, out of these two pots here um, for this half is the one on the outside so as I said if I didn't explain it very well earlier the white one there or if we're looking at the other channel the white one towards the middle of the amp where is it gone it's under a wire Oh, there it is. The white one. Um, the white one's the centre tap. So what I'm going to do is measure the voltage across here. This is a bit tricky to do with one hand a live amp whilst videoing and using the third one. It's hard enough holding the two of these onto those two and streaking that bias pop. So I'm going to pop you down for a second. And um, oh, over here we've got this on. We want to turn it off at ohms. Let's put it on volts. And obviously this is idling current to we want it on DC. So I shall if I right let's have a go. So I can, so I can do this. So I'm gonna start with the red half. Pop that on there. Whee. Check out what I have filming. Check out skills over in my Oh I've got to turn it on uh, got to turn it on first. Well, there we go. And what have we got now? Ooh. 1.33 volts. So if I give that and give that a tweaking, make sure as well if you've got your probes on nicely, give them a good push without them popping off and electrocuting them yourself. Um, because you often get a bit of oxidisation or shits on things, and you might not get a very good connection. So I, I shall pop you down and tweak this pot here until that says about. Did I say? Oh, the calculation was now 1.2, I think it was 70%, but I go a fraction below that. Uh, these are old tubes as well. I think some of them might actually be shot. Um, I'm sure half of this seemed to blow its HT fuse a number of times, and they are old and weren't biased. So let's have a go. Let's see what happens. So oh, I, I should suggest as well this uh, is a little screwdriver because it's only a little diddy diddy hole. Um, so you need a pretty small screw over there. I figured it's quite helpful the fact that this is made of plastic, the, the handle, so I'm less likely to electrocute myself if there's high voltage around on here and I slip. Um, so yeah, let's give it a tweak. Well, 
Passing my hand Alright. Uh, what's the worst that's gonna happen? When I explode. Uh, Alright. So now tweaks that. I've now got a bit under 1.2. Right, so now I'm gonna measure across the other half. Do, 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 do. Alright, what have we got in there? Mm, it's a bit lower. Um but this this matched quad, it's a quad. I can't I can't adjust what the bias is to each tube individually. So it's kind of the average of I mean that that half is actually slightly lower impedance. So I should measure slightly less off it. Um to be honest, to get the same current, um, I didn't actually calculate it off that half um, in my, on my little scrappy bit of paper earlier. But yeah, it should be slightly lower. So if I take the highest impedance side, which I should read the highest voltage off, and I've got that just under, I'd expect this to be a bit lower. But that's still, even with the slightly lower than the calculation thing, that's still more than 55% uh, biased. Um, so yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I've just set those four, I can't bias them individually, um, so yeah, they're all four of them, or both pairs are within tolerance of less than 70% and more than about 55 Um I don't know what to suggest other than that, I don't know, I noticed since I tweaked it down uh, earlier, the um, it hums a bit less, and this pot's a bit lower than it was. So it's it was definitely worth doing because I've wound the bias down, and if I put it any higher, then I run the risk of running one of the tubes too high. Well, I don't want to run any of the tubes too high. I'd rather run them slightly on the cold side. So I guess um, that's as good as it's going to get with that quad um, I know I know that's really supposed to be less than 1.2 and um, yeah I guess I've biased this half of the amp so I've been waffling on for the best part of 20 minutes now and let's turn it off and uh, I'll go on the other half to blue <laughs>